I think when we think about multiple myeloma as a disease, there's obviously that beautiful interaction between a healthcare team and an individual patient. And, and we want to identify in that patient what their uh, challenges are and the best way to treat them. Uh, but when we step back and look at a bigger picture, um, as now we've seen so much evolution in the care of myeloma, I think it is really important that we step back and look at what are the greater challenges that we face really as a myeloma community in caring for patients throughout the whole of their treatment journey, what they, from their diagnosis to their initial treatment to their relapse treatment and for their quality of life throughout. And that was part of the objective of why we thought this was so important to go from the micro to the macro as it were, um, because so often we do work in individual uh, contexts and it's good to step back in a greater context to share that information so we can make it better for patients across the board. I think perhaps the most important theme is that there are great challenges in caring for multiple myeloma patients. And in, even though there are challenges that may be region specific about the certain approval of certain drugs and obviously a cost of drugs, et cetera, it was fascinating to me that there were very important themes that were literally independent of uh, location that really crossed uh, the geographical barriers of, of the planet as we interviewed people you know, from multiple jurisdictions across the country, across the world, really. Uh, and some of those themes included, you know, the complex decision making that has to go into caring for a myeloma patient, the holistic care of a patient that we recognize, as I often say, we don't treat myeloma, we treat people and making sure as this is a disease that affects so many aspects of their quality of life, that we look at it holistically and provide for them more than, if you will, just their explicit treatment. Uh, but but uh, furthermore to that, uh, were the challenges in logistics of treatment, of being able uh, to everything from getting approval of an agent and insurance coverage, transportation of the patient for uh, that therapy, uh, dealing with the side effects of it. Some treatments are delivered in hospitals, some in the clinics, some intravenously, some orally. All of those features make the logistics and the full care of treatment a challenge. And so this was a, a little bit of the, of the tip of the iceberg, but those are major themes that came through. The last theme that I will mention that I think is important to comment on is that we also saw um, the theme of disparities come out, that people did recognize that there was inequitable care even in their own jurisdiction uh, for the patients that were treated, whether that was racial or ethnic or geographic or socioeconomic, that there really was a disconnect um, in being able to provide full care to all patients. It is challenging to think of how we can address all of these issues, and I don't think any of us think that we can fix them all easily overnight, but if we don't put the effort in in a sort of multi-stakeholder fashion, we will never overcome some of these larger barriers. Uh, the, the barriers, as we've mentioned, of logistics, of clarity, of treatment, of indeed disparities, recognizing that there are many that are not well represented in the treatments that we currently have, whether they be in clinical trials or in clinical practice. So. So I think the, the sentiment that came out of it was that we do need a greater collaborative effort, effort between many who are involved in this whole process from the, within the myeloma community. We, you know, sometimes can work in silos and we appropriately work well in each of those silos. But for some of these overarching issues, especially those that really do go above and beyond borders, uh, we felt it was really important to look at strategies where uh, uh, groups of indiv groups and individuals could come together to try and think together about how we could overcome those barriers. Lots of steps are being taken, of course, uh, right down from, as I mentioned, the individual practitioner in the clinic uh, to the larger side of things. And I think one of the great initiatives are going on is indeed the uh, the call to action, the, a collaborative council that has been created to try and bring multiple stakeholders across uh, multiple countries and jurisdictions to really think together and say, what are uh, these most important challenges that we can address together, uh, whether it's in the delayed diagnosis 
diagnosis of the disease, whether it's in the holistic care of patients, whether it's diversity in clinical trials and clinical practice, you know, what are things that we could focus on together that we may not individually be able to to achieve and what resources would be required, what approaches would be taken uh, to try and overcome some of those barriers really to better the care uh, of patients. And so this call to action outlines some of those key areas that uh, should and need to be addressed uh, and develops a bit of an approach uh, through this multi-stakeholder collaboration to try and overcome those challenges.